Hey, welcome back to my allotment. So today it's actually my birthday and it's become a bit of a tradition that every year I'll come to the allotment and pick myself a big bouquet of flowers. You know, all of the dahlias are now in bloom. They're one of my absolute favorites. And it's just nice to pick some flowers and take them home to enjoy them. So I thought I'd bring you with me this year and we'll pick some flowers together, um, stick them in a vase, and we'll talk about some tips on how to pick them, when to pick them, and also how to deadhead your dahlias as well so that you can get maximum amount of blooms from your plants. So um, yeah, let's get picking. When you're cutting your flowers, if you're taking them home, what you want is maximum vase length. You don't want to cut them and for them to only last two days. We want the maximum length from that vase. So the best tips I can give you on doing that are to make sure that your tools are sharp. You've got nice, clean, sharp secateurs to use. And also that as soon as you cut these flowers, you put them into water straight away. You know, even between here and getting them home, I'm gonna put them in water, which is why I've got a bucket here right beneath my feet and also that bucket is really clean the cleaner everything you use whether it be the water or your tools the longer your flowers will live because there's not going to be any bacteria in that water getting fusty blocking up the end of that stem and that will all help to increase the vase length of your flowers when i cut my flowers i also like to deadhead them at the same time and sometimes it's difficult to know exactly what um, is a dead flower head and also what is a new flower bud. And this here is a good example because it shows you both on the same stem. So if you look closely, you'll see that this one here is turning into a bit of a cone shape. Uh, you can see these are the old petals that have since faded, but soon those will drop away. And it can be quite difficult to distinguish which one is the new bud and which one's the old. And a little tip for you is to look for the buttons. The buttons are the little treasures that you wanna keep because if they're round in shape and flat, that's a new flower bud waiting to open. If it's cone shaped, like this one, going into a bit of a point, then that is an old flower head and then that will just turn to seed. And you don't want to waste that energy of that flower going to seed because it could be producing more flower buds. So you need to snip that off as soon as the flower has faded or is starting to fade. So I'll actually cut this just next to that new bud and that will encourage it to bloom even faster. And also when you're deadheading, you want to just follow the stem, follow the stem right back and cut it down at the base. And oh look, it's one of my cricket friends. Lots of them around this year, excuse me. Excuse me, off you go, go on. So I'm just gonna cut this old deadhead right down there. And we've got another one just here so that this here is a nice new bud that will bloom for us over the next week. So there's quite a bit of deadheading to do as well and I like to make sure I've got a bucket for the compost bin as well as my own basket. Also when you're picking your dahlias, um, unlike tulips which will continue to open after you've picked them, Dahlias don't really do that, so you need to pick them at the right time because they're only going to fade and die after that. They're not actually going to open up anymore. And for some varieties, you really want them when they're open and at their fullest to really appreciate them. Like this one, the Wizard of Oz, which is my favourite. And it creates like a bit of a pompon or ball shape. And I just love all of the symmetry and the layers of those petals. So um, I like to make sure that the center of the flower doesn't have too many circles of petals remaining to open. And also I can check by turning the flower round and seeing how far around the back it has opened. This one here actually also has a bud that is really tight and is just about to open. If I cut that, it won't open anymore. It will just remain the same like that. So it's actually worth leaving that on the plant to further open and enjoy. Um, or some people actually like to keep the buds as part of an arrangement because it makes it look a little bit more natural. So I'm just going to snip it beneath the stem where it joins the leaves and dunk it in water. So I've cut my dahlia. It's got a nice slanted end so it can suck up all the water. And I'm just gonna pop it into the bucket here where I've put some chicken wire just so that it stands up because some of these flowers 
have quite short stems so, and this just makes it be able to sit in the bucket and absorb some water whilst not falling into it. <laughs> the Cafe Au Lait, such a gorgeous and well-known dahlia now. Really, really popular for sort of uh, wedding bouquets because of that gorgeous sort of ivory colour. And it's worth remembering actually, I forgot to mention my top tip, before you take any of your flowers home, you've got to do the flower shake because you never know what sort of critters might be coming home with you. Particularly this year, I've got so many crickets in my dahlia patch, which I've never had before. And although these types of dahlias aren't the best for pollinators because they've got so many layers and the insects find it difficult to reach the pollen, the single varieties, which are much more open, are better for that. But insects still love to hide in and amongst all of those petals and I've even found a little sleepy bee in them once. Uh, but you'll find all sorts, earwigs, ants, beetles. Um, so yeah, just give them, give them a nice shake before you take them home. <laughs> the shake test is also a good way to know if your dahlias are actually going over or whether they're in perfect bloom. Because if you shake them and the petals start to fall off, then they're not really gonna last very long in a vase at home. Now this one, you see, shake test, petals are coming off. And also I know it's starting to go over because I can see the center where the pollen is. That indicates that it's starting to go over. So this one, although it looks nice, it's going in the compost bin. Sometimes you will get quite short stems on your dahlias, but what you can do is actually just cut them further down. So rather than cutting them here, I've actually taken it a bit lower down which does mean I might miss a few buds that could come out from here, but I get the pleasure of a longer stem, so a bit of a fuller vase with more height. Dahlias are just so amazing because there's just so many varieties. I think there's about 42 species, and all of those have been bred to make hundreds, if not thousands of hybrids. And you know, these originate from places like Mexico and Central America, where, you know, the Aztecs are believed to have used them for medicine and also for food as well because you can actually eat the tuba. Not that I've tried it, maybe sometime I will. <laughs> well that's the first patch picked. God, try saying that after a few drinks. <laughs> um, I now need to go up to the top of the plot where I've got another bed all the way over there um, to pick some more. So um, yeah, let's go. And if you're quite new to growing dahlias, just remember the more you cut, the more you will pick. You know, this doesn't mean it's the end of the flowers for this year. These are gonna bloom their socks off right until the first frost. So right until early November, we'll still be harvesting lots and lots more flowers, but you need to keep picking them so that they don't go to seed and so that they keep producing flowers for you. So cut off those dead heads, cut off those flowers, and you'll keep harvesting even more. If you're enjoying these videos, I've got more on my dahlias and how I grow them. If you want to take a look, there's a whole playlist dedicated to them, how I grow them, store them, and lift them for winter, that kind of thing. I've also picked here some of the sedum because I want a mixture of different shapes and this makes a nice flat um, pad of pink, which I love. But remember you want nice clean stems at the base. So it's important to take off all of the leaves from any stems that you have so that this doesn't clog in the water and promote bacteria. So now I've got a nice clean stem for the vase. Well, I've got quite a selection to play with and I've got here two different vases. I've got one that's like a big jug, which I prefer because it's got a nice round bottom and you can sort of fix the stems in at different angles. And I've also got quite a straight uh, column shaped 
vase here as well. And whilst I love growing my own flowers, I'm, I'm not a florist. I don't really know how to arrange. I just like to get creative, have a play and um, plunk some flowers in a vase. But I've also got a new gadget um, for my birthday actually that I wanted to show you because you might have used one before, uh, you might have some advice. Um, but it's from a brand called Nuwaki and it's called a Kenzan. And what this is, is basically a different way to arrange your flowers. So it's a really spiky, sort of heavy um, prong thing. And you basically shove your stems directly onto it and it can create quite a Japanese style, um, really simple kind of arrangement, which I'm quite keen to have a play with. Maybe not today, because I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, this isn't a flower arranging video. This is just me playing with some flowers on my birthday. So um, yeah, let's see what we can do. Sometimes for the really big dahlias, I do actually like to just display them on their own. And I've got some antique vintage glass bottles at home. And sometimes, you know, I'll just put one in each bottle and have a bit of arrangement that way across my mantelpiece. And you can also, you know, just use like a, a jam jar. You don't have to use any special vase at all. Um, but yeah, the basics are, make sure you've got a nice slanted stem to suck up the water. Uh, you can then also take off any foliage that might sit below the water. I'm actually going to take off these smaller ones to make a smaller arrangement, I think. And just lose the sedum head. One big one like that. How are we looking? Well, I think I'm gonna leave it about there, take these home and have a play with all of the others and um, enjoy my flowers. So thank you very much for watching and joining me today. I hope you've got lots of flowers to pick in your garden too. Thanks for joining me. See you again, bye bye.